Yay! Welcome back to Tool Time. I'm Robbie the Toolman Taylor, and with me is always my handy assistant, White Dead Dave Borland. And today we have a special guest, South. Uh, he's back in Rec Room finally. We built Once a Life together a few months ago. It was basically my first public room. And he's a guy who's a lot into circuits and music, and he's pretty chill. So today, when we're talking about what to do, he had a question, but uh, if you guys want to introduce yourselves, I know Dave has a cool project he would like to announce, so... Go ahead, Salt. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Um, my name's Salt. I love making music things, like... God damn it! <laughs> I stole his moment, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, since you uh, passed it off to me, man, <laughs> uh, it opened up yesterday, got my Optical Illusions Gallery. That's literally the name of it. Uh, just a, a cool little gallery of some prints that I've done, some little little trip your mind type things and, and see how long you can last in the, in the uh, there's, there's some special spaces in there. You just got to go check it out. It, it's, uh, it's mind blowing at some points. Yeah, I'll leave, the, I'll leave the link to the room in the description, and also leave a comment in the room if you guys check it out. It would be awesome for, for Dave to see, you know, and uh, we'll keep improving that. Uh, but so today we were thinking about what to do, and we've had a couple of requests for some sort of circuits that I don't think are actually on in line with what we've been trying to you know, to learn with, with this curse. So today, talking with South, he had a question about text. Well, more than a question, he had a suggestion about we should talk about text. And one thing that we've been doing, like in, in the Optical Illusion Gallery and also in the Pokemon Cafe, if you've seen that one, is that when you join the room, you'll get like this typewriter effect text that pops on your screen, like a welcome message. And it's something that you do not see like all the time. It also doesn't have like a big purpose. The only reason why we do something like that is because we feel that it catches the attention of the person that joins a little bit more than a normal subtitle because we also include like a bit of audio that goes with it. And so if you want to convey a message that someone that visits your room, your game, your map, your whatever you're working on, uh, having something like this might definitely be like a better way, you know, to give them information rather than just a simple subtitle that pops up and maybe you don't pay attention to. So we'll teach you guys how to and do I, that now. And I feel like you could also do a story with this too, like implement more than just oh. subtitles. Yeah, that that's the thing, especially now that the constance is going on, you know, having like a typewriter effect if you're doing like some sort of quest might be mm -hmm. like something cool. And it doesn't have to have a typewriter sound. Maybe, you know, you can put like a sci-fi sound, like a very futuristic sound and something like that. So, yeah, yeah, that's actually like a good point. So, well, let's learn how to make one of those things and uh, let's get over to the stage now. All right. So here we are, and just like last times, we have already put the circuits all behind this little board. So if Salty, you can please take this board down. We already have the circuits built just to make the the whole video a bit shorter for you. But also remember, we're trying to learn, not just copy-paste. So we will explain what's going on in here. And if Sal has any questions, he will ask them, and we will try to go in depth. Because remember, he's basically your guys' representation over here. And if you guys ever have any questions about future tutorials that you would like to learn, or if you want to be a guest over here in Tooltime 2, leave a comment, ask your questions, and you know we'll, we'll reach out. Uh, but here's the system. Today we're using a button, but down here I actually have the player join and have the if player is local that you guys have already seen before. So the only difference is that if you would want to build this into a welcome message, you will plug this is local into this chip on. All right, what's going on with this is that it's just a bull. It's telling us if the thing is supposed to be going on or not. It's like, okay, are we done with the typewriter message? So once we, um, someone joins or we press this button, we turn the on into true. 
and it will let this if chip run because it's running through at 30 hertz. Remember that means 30 times per second. So this is letting it through. You can see that this is probably highlighted for you. That means that the current is also is only here. Uh, once this turns into true, it will go all over our system. So what happens when, when we let it run? Well, first of all, on the join, we have also a length. This is important. It's just an integer variable. It's set to zero because every time we need to reset it back to zero, so it starts our, our message from the beginning. That's literally all it's doing. But on the top, once this becomes true, uh, we have the delay. The, we're using this delay to basically slow down the typewriter effect. So if we change this plus, uh, with this point 0.1 to, let's say, point 0.5, the, the typewriter effect will be much slower. You will get letter, 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 letter. The, short, the shorter it is, the number, the smaller it is, the faster the typewriter effect will be. So letter, 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 letter. And then after this, we go to the length. All right, this, this whole bit in the middle is, is kind of like the, the meat of, of, of the whole system. Uh, we have this, it's, like, it's called a reroute. It just doesn't really do anything, it's just a chip that basically acts like a connection. So, so you can plug one thing and one thing. The reason why they're useful is when you're working on something that requires a lot of copy pasting. For example, in this case, we have two separate chips that need to have the same string attached to them, right? But if we copy pasted this and, and then you had like more than two, let's say you had a system that was like five, ten things that had to have the same information on them. When you copy paste them, uh, you will have to change all five, ten of them one by one. But if you instead use a reroute, once you copy paste it, you just change it one time and it changes on all of them. So that's one really useful thing you can do with this. We're using it here and we have our string. It just says, I am a reroute. And um, we have two things that to, to do with that string. So the string substring and the string length. String length is basically what it is. It grabs our string, it counts how many characters there are. So if you pull out your pen with your connect tool and you mouse over the length, right now it tells me it's a 14. So we have 14 characters on this string, right? And basically this length that we set at zero first is if you realize it, it's not really plugged to the length, right? The length in here is not the actual length of the string. The length in here is the length that we need the typewriter effect to be. Because this substring, what it actually means, a uh, string substring is grabbing a string and taking part of that string and then pulling out that part information and making it into a shorter string. So we have three connections on this substring. One is the actual string, so we have it here. I am a reroute, the index. The index basically means where am I going to start cutting, right? So right now it's at zero. So because it's at zero, it's going to start on the I. I is, is index number zero. Remember that in all programming, the first one is never one. It's actually zero. So you go zero, one, two, three, four, five. We've seen this before with lists. So if I were to change this index to, to two, it will go zero, one, two. Two is the letter A of um. So it would tell it would start at, at um. It would cut out the I. So again, index just telling our substring where to begin. And then the length. So how much of this actual string do we want to pull? How much do we want to cut out? And right now when we started our system, it's zero, right? So start at zero and give me nothing, right? That's what it would actually do but it won't because of this other length is plugged into an add. Basically, this is going to sum uh, a 1. So every time it runs, it's going to add 1. So it started at 0, will become a 1, and then a 2, and then a 3, and then a 4, and then a 5, and then a, you know, it will basically go forever if you let it run on a 30 hertz because that thing is going to kind of run, you know, almost forever. So how do we know when to stop it? Well, we're going to grab the length that keeps adding itself as long as the on is actually true. And, and we're going to grab the actual length of the string 
we're going to grab the one that is smaller of the two, so we're going to use a min chip, and then we're going to compare it to the actual length of the string. So because basically what's going to happen here is that at some point, the length that we have in this variable is going to go over the actual length of our, of our string. And when that happens, anyway, it won't let it because it's going to grab as a minimum the length, and then it's going to say, oh, now they're the same length. So it's going to be 14 equals 14, yes. When it is a yes, it turns the on to false. When that happens, this if chip that's at the beginning is on false, so the 30 hertz doesn't run anymore. So once it reaches the length of our string, it stops the 30 hertz, and then we're done. It doesn't run anymore. Uh, but when it does run, and while it is running, uh, what's going on is that on this chip, we have both the on chip, because we need the last string to still go through, and then we have the else. The else happens when, when this is smaller, basically. So when our, our length variable is smaller than the length of our string, that means that we're still doing more letters on our, on our subtitle, it's going to let it through on this else. On this else, it's going to give us a show local subtitle that is grabbing the substring, right? Because the substring is going to keep updating itself with this length, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, until it reaches 14. So even though you see like a, you see the one um, subtitle on your screen, what is really happening is that it's pushing 14 subtitles at a time every 0.1 seconds, right? So you're getting I, I space, I space A, I space AM, and it's going to type it like that. Uh, one thing that we did do afterwards, because, I mean, you, you could use it just like this, and it would be completely fine, but one thing we did do was add uh, an audio player, right? We have an audio player over here. Um, you know how to use this now, because we saw the playlist last time, so we have an audio player as a target. This, ideally, is local, so when you join, it plays the sound only for you, and you don't bother anybody else in the room. And then we have a sample audio that you guys will hear now, because I'm going to press the button, and Dave over there is recording. And this, for this example right now, we have the audio player synced, so that when I press it, he can hear it. And I see the subtitle, and you guys are probably listening to the little typewriter sound. And, um, yeah, that's... Um, that's basically it, I think. So again, you can modify it a little bit. Obviously, the things that are important if you're going to copy this is change your string, change your how fast or slow you want it, and also, you know, add your own sound if you want. Um, but yeah, Salt, what do you think? Any questions you might have? Um, so what about if I were to want to space out sentences so it would go one sentence then it would space out then the, there would be a sentence below that first one a sentence below the sentence all right so that's basically something you do <clears throat> with string format that we have seen before right and this is something that for example doesn't happen uh, that often because it's you can, you can only do it on PC I believe and I might have something here, wait, did I save it? Okay, yeah, here it is. So I'm going to put this example right here for you. Oops. So what this is, is a little thing that I made, because when you're on VR or when you're on console or something like that, right, you cannot really space things into, into lines like you do on PC. Uh, so what, what I have here is a, is a text, this is the text chip, but the text is down here, and then I have a string format that I already configured, right? And so basically what this has is, is the same thing with the indexes, so it's like one, uh, zero, one, two, three, right? Well, I have four, I uh, three values, and I have the format. The, the format basically, if you look inside of it, will say in brackets, Zero in brackets, one in brackets, two in brackets. So it's these three lines. If I were to replace these three lines for whatever text I want, right? And then I connect this, for example, to our button right now, just to use that as an example. If I press this button, 
this text, text, text became, or one text, because it was actually only one text, became line one, line two, and line three. So it is actually using only one text gadget. So instead of using three of them, saving you ink, uh, you can use something like this. So the format essentially replaces a substring? No, the format replaces the string. The format is just the way you are arranging text. Okay. And in this case, we are arranging it into three different lines. All right, so now that we, now if we wire that end to the reroute, like I explained before, it goes to two, so you don't have to wire it twice, and we press the button, it will do line one, line two, line three. Unfortunately, what happens in this case is that even though it is grabbing this format as a string and then dividing it, just by means of the local subtitle, it does not do lines. So it will do line one, line two, line three on one same line. Mm -hmm. You can do it for other things like texts, but line spacing on subtitles doesn't work. Well, there we go. And on that note, any, any other questions? Can I draw a smiley face? All right, so what South is drawing a smiley face. Um, please leave a comment if you want to see other examples of tutorials that we can do. Uh, we're working on Construm. Dave over here is still submitting shirts, like this one he has on. Hopefully it gets uh, featured. Uh, I'm not even in the camera. And there we go. <laughs> yeah, check out Random Architects in-game. We have a club we build. We hang out. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao. Bye.